everybody want to make some fun and cool collage keep watching this video because we're going to use this really cool picture of Marilyn Monroe and we're going to have some fun ready so today we are using just the back side of a cereal box cut off one end so we're going to do that and we're going to glue down some music notes some book paper and things like that um, some dictionary paper as part of our background so we're going to do that first and doing that I am just going to use a glue stick so you can rip up your pieces however you want we are going to gesso over some of this so it does not have to be perfect this is just for a background look these are just background Secure that down. My, you will notice my glue is purple, but the purple dries clear, so you don't have to worry about that. So we're going to put that on like that. I love collage. Collage is so much fun. here to tack that down so that is that one now we are going to use some of the book paper and this is just out of an old encyclopedia and I like to get off the edges with no writing in our writing I know for some people this goes against everything that they think, but it does not always have to go so it's legible, so it's it's readable. You can always turn it the opposite way, because really we're doing this for background. It's not so we can read it, right? So you can always turn it. I could have done that with the music note paper too, and I might still add some more so I can do that then. some dictionary paper dictionary paper It's very easy to find papers like this. You must have some in your stash. So 
And if you don't, you can get some online. I also sell some on my Etsy shop. And if you're local, you can just contact me. I have it on my face or in Facebook Marketplace and on my Facebook group, Create and Play with Renee. So you can check out those. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that all underneath the bell notification button. Okay, so we are going to put this one in sideways. Okay, and then I'm going to add some more print. Then I'm going to add this one because it's a little bit bigger so it will look a little different. And you can overlap these. They do not have to just be like this because honestly, again, we're not reading it, right? It is background. All right. I'm liking the looks of this one. Okay. And with this project, I have a whole bunch of stuff for collage, but it would be great if you had um, old magazines, um, preferably pictures if you have like a giant face as I showed you with my Marilyn Monroe, but um, you can even get collage books, of which I got mine out of, but um, you can get these images anywhere. You could even print them off the internet if you could get a good one and you have a decent printer. that and then we're going to put this one on and this should be our last one after this we are going to put some gesso over top and for this one I'm using a heavy white gesso okay so there we go this is a heavy gesso it is from Finnebar, and I'm going to slather that on here. I'm just going to put it in a few different areas and then rub it across. Getting down to the end, I might have to grab my other bottle. And with some of these, I like the heavy. My other one I use, which is a Demco, it is not heavyweight, so. Some of these I use heavy, some I don't. It just depends. So we're going to slide this across and just cover up some of our writing in the empty edges just so it all fits in and it blends. And as this is a packaging from a cereal box, there are some spaces here where the folds are in the box. Sorry. So you want to maybe try and fill those in a little bit with your gesso as well. trying to cover up all of your craft on the box so you can't see it. If you don't want to use a glue stick, you could use a gel, um, like a matte medium. That would have worked great too, because sometimes with using a glue stick you can get an air bubble, 
but for the most part anywhere where we would have possibly had an air bubble should be covered with our project so we shouldn't have to worry about that um, I am going to go around later with some paint so we will touch up some of those edges so we don't really need to worry about the outside so we're just going to let that dry and then we'll be on to step two so the next thing we're going to do is just add some acrylic paint and this one's a burnt umber and we're going to put it around the outside edge I do that a lot. I prefer to just use my finger. I know for some people that don't like to get their hands dirty, probably not a great idea, but for me it doesn't matter. And this paint easily washes off, so you don't need to worry about that if that's what you're worried about. So you want to just move it around, get some flow, some movement. This is very fun to Try and manipulate around here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so now we're going to do the bottom. Or it could be the top, whichever you want. Okay, so we're going to do that. And then same thing, a little bit of water on our finger and manipulate it around. Paint on our finger. There we go. Okay, love it. Okay, we're gonna move this around a little bit more. So you wanna get that going. Add some water. Again, you're trying to get some movement and flow. And next thing we're going to do is add some more gesso. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna add gesso this time. You can use gesso. But what I'm going to use is some Snowflake Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Paint. This is the Snowflake, and as you can see, it's opacity level. I am going to just put this on my palette here. Come on. I use this color a lot. So I am going to brush this on in the middle because we're going to add a little bit of white. And just kind of. Blank out some of the space. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll just put it right on the paper. If you're not comfortable in doing what I'm doing right now, make sure you put it just on your palette. And you have to be careful with some paints because it will soak into the paper, but mine is not going to be on here long enough. I'm going to be moving it around. So you don't want to drop it on there and leave it there, that's for sure. Okay, so 
and then put that on there like that. And again, you don't want to have brush strokes, which you probably don't. You can use your finger and thin out those brush strokes. Just put a little bit of water on and thin that out. And again, you're going to see slight bubbling from the paper, but that's okay because our image will be over top. So there is that. So we're just going to let that dry and then we're on to our next step. So now I have cut out all of my collage pieces I'm thinking I might use. And the next step we need to do is I am going to cut off, sounds weird, but Marilyn's hair. Because we are going to be covering her hair up. So I'm going to get just in this area because our collage pieces are going to be in her hair. So you want to take off all the hair areas in case we don't completely cover them up. So it's weird to cut off her hair and see a bald Marilyn, but that's essentially what we're doing. So we're going to do that. I'm just going to trim around her shoulder area a little bit more. And then I'll show you essentially what we're going to do. For anybody who has not seen this before, because I'm not the person that invented this by any stretch. So some of our pieces we're just going to do like so, or you could do like that. We're covering up some of the areas, and I am probably going to go through here and cover that up area up as well. So you can go through, find where your pieces fit, and everything fits in different spots. You can put some under her, over her, whatever works. So right now we're just playing around to see what areas certain things would work in. And it's going to look funny, it's going to look ridiculous, you name it, but it's, it's fun. You don't want to leave her hairline open so you don't see her hair sticking out like that. And again, like I said, we're just playing around for so far just to see what we want to create. We might need some more pieces. So that's one good reason to do this. And greens always are a nice add-on. Don't mind my kitty. She's saying, feed me, mama, feed me. Yes, I know, I heard ya. So this will go in here somewhere. I kind of like the monkey on the back idea. So I'm going to add some more pieces and then we're gonna see how that looks. So here is what I've pulled, and I'm not probably going to use all of this, but some of it. So this kind of gives us an idea of what we want to do, and I'm going to start tacking some of it down now, starting with Marilyn. You will want to start tacking this down with something like a gel medium or 
If you're a fan of Mod Podge, you'll want to use Mod Podge. You do not want to use regular glue because it could wash off, it could fall off. Um, yeah, probably not a great idea. So I'm using Mod Podge. I'm just going to take off some stuff off here. All right. Or sorry, not Mod Podge. I'm using the gel medium. This one is Dina Wakeley's gel medium, but any one is fine. You want to get enough on that it will stay flat, but not too much that it's going to buckle. So hopefully that doesn't happen. And we don't get air bubbles. You could always use a brayer afterwards to try and get the air bubbles out or just smooth it out with your finger, whatever you choose. Okay, so now we're going to tack our subject down here. The bottom. Okay, so we'll spread her out like so. Still looks so weird to see her with no hair. Okay. See, I've got a bubble right in here, so if that's what you want to try and avoid. don't want to put on too much and that's what I was worried about that I would use too much so get that on there tack that down hopefully you guys are liking the collage process too bad I wasn't actually talking to you live right now I can find out how many of you do collage on a regular basis, or if this is your first time seeing collage, or if uh, you're watching this for a second time maybe, and you are following along. So. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that down like so. All right. So we are going to go to our next level. The thing I'm going to do next is her necklace because some elements are going to cover that. So I'm going to do her necklace next. And with that, um, basically what I'm trying to do is cover up her current necklace that she has. So I'm going to start, make sure you get it under her chin. You don't want to cover up her face or else it doesn't look normal um, you can have anything you could use flowers you could use animals you could do whatever you want as um, something to cover her necklace or if you have another thing you another picture you're using um, that had something you can yeah just use whatever works that could be a cover Now we're starting to go around a curve. So and there's four colors in this necklace set. I love the green. And then we're back to the blue. There's a slight bit still showing, but you probably won't notice that once we get everything tacked together. Um, and I'm just gonna speed this process on because you know basically what I'm doing. All 
right, so we've got our necklace down. The next thing we're going to do is put the foliage on. See her face is starting to buckle a little bit. Hopefully that will dry flat. never tell the difference between an alligator or the crocodile. Don't know which one it is. Down her back. And the reason I'm using this image is because I'm trying to cover up her dress strap or the back of her dress, I guess. is done. Now to tack down some of our other images. I'm going to put that one up there. I'm trying to give this some height so we can put some of our other images on here. And they're not all one level, if that makes sense. going to try to do this level. So we want this level done. Because you can go and add afterwards. So we're trying to do, think of it in layers. We're trying to do layer number one and then we'll do layer number two. So we were going to put that like that. So I don't know if we caught all of that. I just realized that my video turned off. So hopefully you got this. This are the collage pieces I put down with my gel medium. And I'm thinking I need a little piece out here. So I might grab some more foliage and put that in there. But my next step I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of circles on here using some modeling paste. And this is Finnabar's modeling paste. So that's what I'm gonna use with this one. And we're gonna add some depth, dimension, and some color using this. So let's try that now. So this is Tim Holtz stencil. And honestly, for the life of me, I don't remember what this one's called again but uh, the number is always on it and it is uh, THS138. It's the bubbles or baubles or whatever, not really sure. So we're gonna put some circles on here. And I have to say that uh, for those of you who watch Marami Small Art, she kind of gave me some inspiration to create this. I have made these before. Um, you can use magazine, like I said, magazine magazine books um, pages, or you can use whatever. Like I, I've used magazine pages. I've used collage pages, of which this is from a collage book, which I will show you in a few minutes. Um, which collage book I used? 
but there's there's many. I uh, use a lot of collage books actually for different things, and all of the collage books I have I got off of Amazon, so you can get them there as well if, if that's something you like. This one I am using now I did in fact get from Amazon. So I'm going to take that one up and there's that one and then I'm going to make some circles over here on this side as well. And I'm going to flip it around a little bit. Same thing, I hope I can see what I'm doing from the angle. But I'm just doing the same thing we did on the other side with our modeling paste and our stencil. Okay, so there's that. And then I'll pull that one up. All right, so I am going to just take off this little bit in here around her shoulder area. Couldn't see that through the stencil. So we're gonna take that off of the shoulder area. So that's fine. And some of these I'm just gonna flatten out a little bit. And the reason I flatten some of these out, um, I've mentioned in previous videos if you haven't seen, but it's just so it doesn't have like a very hard rough edge. So that's the only reason. And I'm going to get rid of those ones. Okay, so we're going to let that dry and then we'll come back in a second and I'll show you the next step. So I found this little piece that I'm going to tack down and use just in here just to finish off that side. And I thought this was a perfect piece to finish that off. So I'm going to put that right over here and put that down there like that. And I'm just using my gel medium and tack that down. Would have been better if I would have put this on before the bubbles, but that's fine. Okay, so we'll put that on. There we go. Our bubbles have dried. So now we're just gonna add a little bit of watercolor paint. Um, so we'll do some watercolors on there. And what color should we use? Um, pink and some... Brown, maybe. Yeah, let's try the pink. Sorry, my neighbor's got a motorcycle on, so you can probably hear that in there. Okay, so I'm gonna get a squirt. Okay, so I'm going to add, um, I think I'm going to do this color. See how this looks on the other side. Ooh, I like that. It goes nice with the brown. There 
we're just going to manipulate it a little bit here. Yeah, I'm liking the look of this. Might have to put that color on the other side, just saying. And I'm trying to get the color between the dots. Sometimes it's not that easy because there's not a loose lot of space. I don't know if you can see this. And then get a good spray and move it around. So that is that one. So let's try that color on the other side because I'm kind of liking that color. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to go back and I am going to add some brown to the outside edge and just have that go in. So what are you thinking so far, friends? Is this something you like? Do you collage? I like saying it like that. Collage. Reminds me of Diane Reedley. I love and she says collage. Collage. All right. Love the colors. Love the colors. Hopefully you are too. When we're done, I'm going to go over slight bits and pieces with our gel medium just to seal it. You can even do that with a clear gesso as well. It works well too. Okay. As we gessoed ahead of time, this will help with all the water and all the color on here, in case you're worried. So, this 
just going to let that dry. And while we're letting that dry, I'm going to grab my Stabilo All Pencil, which is what I like to use. I like to use the Woody Pencil too, the 3-in-1, but I'm not using that on here. I'll use that in a project coming soon. So, seeing as this is for our shoulder and we want to get some dimension, I'm just going to trace around it. Same thing with her face. I'm just going to, there we go. Just one Sharpen my pencil. I can go slightly around the edge. Just get around her face. Just to basically outline it for that dimension. And I'm going to do that down here as well. And that should be it. Yeah, I think we got what we wanted to do. You can put your little initials if you use them. But there it is. So that is my collage creation. It will dry. Got a little bit of water in here. So you can go kind of go through. Make sure your water's out, your areas are dry. You can go over it, like I said before, with um, a gel medium. I'm just gonna dry off my brush. Just to lock in all of your pieces. Just wanna be careful, you don't wanna hit the pencil with this because that will smudge it. And you can go around these other pieces too to get some depth and dimension and I probably will. Let's just do a little bit here while this is also drying. See, butterfly. is so much fun and you can do fun and silly things kind of like this because anything goes it's just a creative outlet it's freeing and it doesn't have to make sense don't have to outline your project. I just did a little bit. Okay, so we'll let that dry. That is my project. Thanks for watching crafters. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification and all if you like my videos. And uh, don't forget to like them. Thanks for watching everybody. Have an awesome day and happy collaging.